The Advanced Custom Fields plugin is a fantastic choice when adding custom fields to your WordPress website. You can add custom fields to posts and pages, as well as custom post types. Now you may not fully appreciate the capabilities of all these field types when you first view the custom fields plugin. Some of them are fairly straightforward, such as the text and text area field, while others, including the flexible content and repeater fields, are not quite as straightforward. You may not appreciate exactly how these fields are going to look on the front end of the website, and you might not know exactly what they look like in the back end as well, in the administration dashboard. So in this video, we're going to go through all of these fields and take a look at exactly what they appear like in the administration dashboard and then what they look like on the front end. If you go to the advanced custom fields website, you can check out all of the field types available in the pro version. However, I've got a neat and tidy Excel sheet which will go through all of the different groups of fields available and what options you've got for fields. So first of all, you have basic fields, which include text, text area, number, email, URL, and password. And these are typically used most within the plugin. The text area especially, which just enables you to add two or three words in a field, for example, and the text area gives you the opportunity to add paragraphs of text. The number, email, URL, and password are very similar to a text field. Now, I won't go into any more depth in terms of exactly what all of these fields are going to do because you'll be able to see that visually throughout this video. The next group of fields are content fields and they include the WYSIWYG editor, which many people who use WordPress will be familiar with, the O-embed, which enables you to add YouTube videos and other content and obviously embed that on the front end of the site. You can upload images, you can upload a file and also multiple images to a gallery. The choice fields include select, checkbox, radio button, and true or false. And in short, choice fields give you the ability to limit the user's capability when they're adding a custom post type or adding the information in the administration dashboard. So they'll have a drop down for the select field, they can check boxes for the checkbox, and also they can check radio buttons as well. The relational fields are post object, page link, relationship, taxonomy, and user. In short, these fields give the opportunity to pull data from the database. So it might include other posts on the website. That's what post object, page link, and relationship can do. And they've got certain capabilities and settings which give you different options depending on what you want to do. You can pull data for the taxonomies on the website and various options are available for that. And you can show the user associated with the post or page, depending on how you want to use that field. The query fields include Google Map, Date Picker and Color Picker. Obviously Google Map, you can add an address for a location and then the Google Map will appear in the back end of the website. And obviously you can show that on the front end also. Date picker is fairly straightforward. You can simply click on the field and then pick a date. Color picker is also similar to the date picker, but obviously you can choose a hex color or a color that you may wish to make up in the back end of the website. Layout fields are where it gets a little bit more complicated. A message field is not really that applicable, but you can have a message within the back end of the website above another field but this won't actually be shown on the front end of the site. The tab is also something that won't be shown on the front end of the site, but it enables you to group other fields together within a tab. So the back end of your site becomes a little bit more tidy and you can put other fields within a tab. The repeater field is where it gets a little bit more complex. You can essentially add other fields above from the other groups, so choice fields, relational fields, and a lot of the content and basic fields within a repeater field and then create a setup which repeats essentially. The flexible field is where it gets the most complex if you like and lots of the other fields above can be added within a flexible content field and then the user who's adding a custom post type or a post or page depending on where you add the flexible content can then decide what they want to add 
each time a custom post type is created. But the content they can choose for the flexible content is decided when you set up the flexible content field. So it doesn't mean you can add any of the fields you like when the user is logged into the back end. It will be set up in the first instance and we'll go through that in this video. So each of these fields have been set up in the website. I've added all of these fields within a group. So text, text area number, email, URL and password is added within a field group called basic fields. So let's go to the back end and show you exactly what I mean by that. So here you go. The advanced custom fields are added in field groups. And here you can see them. Basic fields, choice fields, content fields, layout fields, query fields, and relational fields. And obviously that is exactly the same as the groups that are listed in the Excel sheet as shown here. Within each of these groups, I've added those fields. So if we go to this link here, you'll notice that all of the fields are in place for basic fields. That's the name of the group. And we've got text field, text area, number field, email field, URL, and password. Within each of these fields, if you click on edit, you'll notice various things are in place, including the field label, field name. Obviously the field type is text. There's some instructions which will help the user to fill in the custom post type or the field correctly whether it is required field or not. There's some placeholder text, which basically is information that goes in the cell or the field, if you like, to help the user fill in the information correctly. The prepend is some content that is before the field. You can add a character limit for text, and also you can add other much more detailed information, including conditional logic and wrapper attributes. I won't go into the settings into much detail at this point, but essentially each of the fields have some information and options which need to be set up. These options can be the same for most of the fields. Um, and sometimes the fields do need some specific information. So for text, it, for example, you'll need to add a character limit and maybe rows. And for other fields, such as the image field, you might want to add a size parameter. So maximum size and minimum size and also a dimensions parameters as well to make sure that obviously the user does not upload images which are inappropriate or bad resolution. So what do these custom fields look like when they're added to a custom page? Now this particular custom post type has already been created and all the necessary setup is in place. We won't go down the route of describing exactly how that's put together. But in short, the custom fields have been added to this post type. At the top, you'll notice the basic fields are in place. And there's the first text field. And we've added some information to this post already, so you can see how it's put together and exactly how you may use these custom fields. We've added Manchester United in the text field and some content in the text area. And if we scroll down, you'll notice we've got data in all of the fields, number field, email, URL, password, and so on. The content fields are in place, as you'll notice, the WYSIWYG editor with some content and images, the Oembed field with a YouTube video. There's an image uploaded, a file. There are eight images in the gallery field. We have selected an option for the select field. We also have a select field, which gives you the ability to add multiple options. And we've added option one and four. The checkbox field is also in use with the option three, six, and nine in place. The radio button, option five, true or false is checked. The relational fields, we've selected numerous posts for the post object field, page link, and the relationship field. The taxonomy field has a number of taxonomies, therefore categories which have been selected. We've also added the taxonomy field checkbox where we've listed three categories. The taxonomy field radio buttons is also in place. The difference between taxonomy field checkbox and radio buttons is the checkbox enables you to add multiple categories, whereas the radio buttons only enables you to add one. The user field is selected also, and this user can be shown on the front end of the site. 
The query fields include obviously the Google map field and the address has been added in the field and then the Google map appears underneath. The date picker is in place. We've added a random date in there and the hex color has been added in the color picker field. The layout fields, which are the slightly more complex ones, are added below. You have the flexible content field where we've got a text row with two columns of text. We've got another text row with just one row. We've then got a gallery with four images and that also includes a field for a title. So in this example, what that means is you've got a text field for the title and then you've got a gallery field underneath it for all of the images. We've then got a text area field for the gallery description. And then underneath that, we've got a row for quote, which includes a text area for the quote and a text field for the name. We've also added an image with a caption and the caption is a text area field. And then under that, we've got a quote. So the flexible content field is possibly one of the more complex fields associated with the advanced custom fields plugin. And at this point, I just need to show you exactly what this will do. You could click on this plus icon here and then add more text rows, more image rows, more quotes and more galleries as applicable. And then you can move these around so the text can then go below the text underneath and so on. And essentially that means that the front end of the site can be manipulated by moving these things around in the back end of the site. The flexible content field is exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you a lot of flexibility within the custom page that you may have or indeed you might have this on a post or a page if applicable. However the one thing to note is that when you do click on this plus icon the options that are available have been set up previously so there aren't an unlimited amount of things that the user can do. The capabilities that they have will be limited to these four as has been set up previously. Of course you could set this up completely different for a flexible content field and have other kinds of rows that are different to text, image, quote, and gallery. Now the next more complicated field, which is a layout field, is the repeater field. And if we scroll down, it is located down here. And the repeater field is within a tab. Now you don't need to worry about the tab field in terms of exactly what it does but principally it's in place so that you can add other fields within it to have a more tidy appearance within the backend administration dashboard of your custom post type or postal page or wherever you put custom fields. Now, if you were to click on another tab, you'll notice that there are some other information associated with text fields. So we've got three other random text fields here to show you how the tab features work. So let's go back to this tab field here and the repeater field. In short, the repeater field includes other fields above. So it might have text fields in it, text areas or image fields. Basically, it can be a combination of the other fields that we've looked at above. But with the repeater field, once you've set it up, you can keep repeating those fields over and over again. So you might have, as is the case in this example, which is a menu, you may have the requirement to keep repeating certain information. So with a menu, you obviously keep repeating the dish name, dish description, and dish price because every menu has multiple items. As such, the name of the dish the description and dish price can simply keep being added. And to do that, you would click on add dish. This approach means that this content is going to be structured on the front end of the site in an appropriate way. And obviously the design is all in place. If you weren't to have something like a repeater field and you allowed the person who has access to the administration dashboard 
to try and create something like this using a table in the WYSIWYG editor, for example, you might not be able to control exactly what it looks like on the front end. So that's where the repeater field comes into its own, where you can essentially control what the user is adding and then obviously make sure that it is portrayed in the right way on the front end of the site. So you can do this for, let's say, starter dishes. You can group all those together and then repeat a field associated with that and then do the same thing for main dishes. And if you like, you can then click on add a meal type and then create other dishes such as desserts. So the repeater field gives you the opportunity to keep creating different levels if you like. The levels that we've got here are three levels if you like. We've got the meal type, which is starter dishes or main dishes in this example. Then we've got the dish details, that's the next level down. And then that goes into the actual details that are associated with those dishes, which include dish name, dish description, and dish price. The repeater field gives you that ability to keep going down in layers and levels so that you can create fairly complex field structures for your custom post types, or indeed if you really wanted to add this to other pages and posts, I'm sure you could as well. But what does all of this information, all of these fields that you can use with the Advanced Custom Fields plugin look like on the front end of the site? Well, let's take a look at how it may view. Now, here's an example that I've put together, which basically pulls all the data from that post type into a design. Now, this design is a little bit all over the place, if you like. I've tried to show you different ways in which you can use those fields. So at the top, we have the title of the posts, which is simply custom page example. And we've got a pagination as well, which has been added above all of the necessary code to pull all the data from the post. Now, obviously, if you're not familiar with how websites are put together and how things work, this page is built with the data from the post. So all of the data that's added in here, as you can see, all this data that's added to the fields is shown on this page, together with static information, which will always show when you add a new custom post type or wherever you add these particular fields. So basic fields, this text here, and this text here in red, this text here in red also, and the text you'll see on the right hand side here is all static information. So they'll always show every time you create a new post page or custom post type. Whatever way you use these fields, that's how it will be displayed on this particular design. Now obviously, to create the design like this, you'll need to utilize some CSS and obviously PHP to pull all the information into the correct design and obviously show things on the front end. So this information here for the text area is data from the post and therefore the custom fields that we've added to this post. This information here, categories, is data from the post. This information here, the text field, is data and number field, etc. Now if we scroll down this page, you'll start to see how the information populates on the front end of the site. So the WYSIWYG field is shown with content and an image. You'll notice that the standard format for the text is as shown and the title text is also in place. And with the WYSIWYG editor, you can obviously change the format of the text as shown here. Obviously, the WYSIWYG editor gives you lots of flexibility to add content in a lot of different ways. So you don't have to just be limited by an image. You might actually add a video within the WYSIWYG editor. The problem potentially with adding a WYSIWYG field is that if you give the user that flexibility, this part of the design could end up being very untidy indeed. So you need to think very carefully about how you use the WYSIWYG field. The O-Embed field is fairly straightforward and obviously you can use PHP and particular CSS to add the video in a particular format and size it correctly. The image field is essentially just sized correctly and responsive so it fits correctly on the page and you can see that the title of the image and caption are also in place. 
you click on the image, you'll notice that it goes through to a fancy box structure. All the code necessary for the fancy box has been uploaded via FTP to the website. And then any necessary PHP on this page is then linked to the fancy box so that you can obviously click on it and view the image in that way. If we keep scrolling down, you'll notice that the file field is in place. And if you click on that, you'll be able to see the PDF that is associated with that file field. On the right hand side, you'll notice an image and this image is a static image. It is not an image that has been uploaded to this post. So once more, this particular design is a combination of static content and information that's been pulled from the post. We scroll on a little bit further, you'll see that we've got the gallery images in place. Now we've got the gallery images in a slider on the left hand side, which obviously you can click the arrows and use it as a normal slider. And on the right hand side, the images are in four rows and two columns. And if you click on the images, you'll then see the fancy box once more. And this utilizes the same code as the image above. The choice fields are also in place. You can see that the option for the select field as well as the multiple options for the select field multiple are also in place as well as two static images to the side of all the choice fields. The relational fields are fairly straightforward and you'll see the posts that have been selected the headers post, links post, image post, and multiple paragraph posts. You can also pull the page link fields in to show read this as opposed to the title of the post if necessary. The taxonomy fields are listed fairly straightforward and also the radio buttons taxonomy fields are also there as well. The user field is displayed and you can simply just add the user on the front end of the site as you can see here. To add a little bit more spice, if you like, we've got the taxonomy field checkbox, which includes the title of the taxonomy, the description for the taxonomy, and a link through to the taxonomy or indeed category page. The image on the right is once more a static image and is not data from the post. So you'll always see this image within the design. Below that, you'll see the relational field, which includes four posts, their image, the title of the post, author name, date, and also the excerpt that is associated with this post and a read more link. Obviously the PHP that's necessary to bring in this content is in place together with some CSS to make sure that design, the hover effects, the colors, and the rest is all in place. Scroll down a bit further and you'll see the query fields. The Google map is designed and in place to fit on the left hand side with the date picker field and also the color field. Now we get through to the layout fields, which are a little bit more complex. You'll see that the two columns of text are in place together with the one row of text that we added. The image gallery is in place, as you can see here with the four images. And if you click on those images, they'll also go through to a fancy box and use the same code as above. Keep scrolling down and you'll see the first quote keep scrolling a bit more and you'll see the image with the caption underneath it and then finally you'll see the other quote that we've added in the back end if you were to go back to the administration dashboard and then scroll down to your flexible content and then let's say we're going to move this text below the gallery so the text then becomes number three the text, which is just one row, is the first one, and then the gallery comes after that. Now we click update and then go back to the page and click refresh and then scroll down to the layout fields. You'll notice that the order has changed. So we've got the one row of text is at the top and then we have the gallery in place in second position and then the two columns of text are below the gallery. That's essentially the benefit of the flexible content field. It gives you the ability to move things around and deliver something slightly different on the front end each time you create the custom post type page or post or wherever the field is located. At the bottom below that, we have the repeater field and there you'll see the design in a table for the menu. So we've got the starter dishes together with the dish name, dish description and dish price as well as the main dishes. 
Finally, we've got the other tab fields with those three text fields that are included within that tab to show you how they could also appear. And we've got some social share icons at the bottom as well. The page therefore is made up of lots of different PHP, some CSS that links to this to make sure that the design works correctly. Just in case you're not aware, and this is something that is often left off these videos, is when you're creating a custom post type and adding lots of different fields, as we've done in this example, is that the first few stages of creating custom post type and then a custom fields is fairly straightforward in terms of building those things together once you understand what they do. The complex part comes if you're not familiar with CSS and PHP is actually building this part of it, making it look right on the front end. So understanding the first bit's okay, but this bit is the troublesome bit for many people. So don't get put off by advanced custom fields. Go through the process of understanding what these fields do. And my suggestion is if you're not that good with CSS or PHP is to come up with a design that's applicable for you based on the fields that you've added in the administration dashboard and give that to a professional who can basically do your PHP and CSS for you to make it look effective. Not necessarily like this design because I've decided to do it in a way which makes it look different and show you how different fields can be used. But of course, put it in perspective for your design so that obviously everything works correct for you. I hope that video was of use for you. If you have any questions, obviously add some comments below this video.